Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth, a homestyle Bible study where we present God's Word from God's perspective and not man's. We study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. But we shun profane and vain babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness. And things which also we speak, not in the words this man's wisdom teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now these three references can be found in Second Timothy chapter two verses fifteen and sixteen, and First Corinthians chapter two verse thirteen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I always ask you a very simple question when we begin our study. Do you really believe God when you read his word as to what he says? Today's topic, why does the word of God and Jesus Christ scare the hell out of most people? That might be a little bit of a controversy and topic here for a lot of people, but bear with me because I'm going to show you something totally from man's perspective and then from God's perspective as to why this happens. For the most part, the question is why does the Word of God scare the hell out of so many people? And maybe we should let Scripture tell you that. If you want to open your Bibles, it's a very simple verse in John 17, the book of John, chapter 17. Verse 17 reads this, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Truth, ladies and gentlemen, is God's word. God does not lie. You take your Bibles and go back into the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. And in the book of Numbers, chapter 23. In the, in the Old Testament, Numbers is just before the book of Deuteronomy and just after the book of Leviticus. In chapter 23, verse 19, reads, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And then there's also a reference in the book of Hebrews. Going back over to the New Testament in the book of Hebrews, which is right after 2 Timothy. Excuse me, after the book of Philemon. I can't find it right offhand where it says it, but it says it in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. Chapter 6 of Hebrews, verse 18, reads that by two imputable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. God is not a man that he should lie. His word is truth. Truth, ladies and gentlemen, is one thing that will scare the hell out of so many people 
when it comes to the Word of God. Now let's look at some things from man's perspective first on this to give you an idea. What does man say about mankind? Human beings, men, women, children. Man says, you're a very good person. You do so many good things. This world is a better place because of the good that you've done or that you're doing or that you stand for. My goodness, you belong to many civil, civic organizations within your community. You're a good teacher. You're a good businessman. You've been a good employee of a company you've worked for for 35 years. You've been a good volunteer at many civic organizations throughout your community. You've been a good volunteer for the fire department. You've been a good volunteer for the fair of the county when it's in your town or in your area. Look at how many things you volunteer for. And you give to so many charitable organizations. My goodness, you're a good father to your kids. You're a good husband to your wife. You're a good grandfather to your grandchildren. You're a good uncle to your nieces and nephews. You're a good brother. You are a good son to your mother and father. And the same with the woman. My goodness, you're such a good wife to your husband. You're such a good mother to your kids. You're such a good grandmother to your grandkids. You're such a good wife to your husband who is a grandfather. You're such a good aunt. You've done so many good things. You're such a good cook. You are a good person. You're such a kind person, such a caring person, such a loving person. The world is such a good place because of people like you. And again, you have done all these good things. That is what man tells the human race. You might be so good because you volunteer for an advocate for human rights. Maybe you're good because you volunteer for the protection of animal rights. Maybe you are an advocate for the environment. Maybe you're an advocate for the treatment of human beings so there's no prejudice in this world. You want everybody to be treated the same. You're such a good person and the works that you do are so incredibly good. You've raised money for an orphanage. You've been able to help promote to build a hospital. You've helped to build schools. You're just such a good person. That's what mankind wants to hear. And that's exactly what man in this world tells you. Because they know what it is you want to hear. And people flock to that. Why not? The world tells you, you're such a good person, and, and the world's perceiving of what love is. It's, you love somebody, and you'll have love in return. If you, don't, if you give out love and you don't receive love, that person isn't worth loving. That's what the world tells you. Leave that person. Go find somebody that will love you for who you are. And you can love that person for who they am. They are. And the world will turn. That's what mankind, from man's wisdom, finite as it is, tells people. Because that's what people want to hear. It's the good in them that brings out the good in them. That's what drives people. That's what builds an eagle. That's what works on the emotions of people. And that's what people thrive on. They don't want to hear negativity. They don't want to hear anything of what is wrong with them. 
although down deep in the darkest part of their soul, they know exactly who they really are. To some degree now, ladies and gentlemen. That's why mankind has no problem listening to the wisdom, the finite wisdom of man of this world. They embrace it. They worship it. They believe it. They practice it and they live it. And then comes along somebody that might tell them, you know, have you ever looked at it from God's perspective? And I have, ladies and gentlemen, had a lot of people in my lifetime come to me and say, well, I need and I would like to study the Word of God. And not out of any disrespect or anything, I sometimes caution them and tell them, you might not like what it is you hear from God's Word, and they'll give me this strange look, and what do you mean? And I just gently tell them sometimes what God has to say you weren't expecting. I guess that's the most mild way I can put it. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, with everything previously that I mentioned, that man tells mankind that they're good. That's from man's perspective. And if you've known my studies in the past and listened to any videos, what's behind man's finite mind is Satan. Because man will tell you also, you're good. Good will triumph over evil. You can control evil because you're a good person. You aren't going to do those things. Oh, some people might slip up and do some evil things, and they're just a bad apple in there. We don't have to love them because they're not good, but you are for what you do and what you stand for. Now, let's just take a look at some things from God's perspective, not mine. And not man's, but from God's perspective on what he says man is. And we'll just kind of bounce all over scripture here, just from places that would come to mind when we're talking about the Word of God. As the Holy Spirit moves us, we will present it. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, just to start with. Let's go to chapter 17 of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, right after the book of Isaiah, one of the major prophets, and then it's just before the book of Ezekiel. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 says, from God's perspective now, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 11, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Ladies and gentlemen, mankind and you don't want to hear that. You were just told you're good from all the kindness that you have and all the good things you've done for everybody involved in your life. You don't want to hear this. But let's give a few other spots from God's Word. Let's go back up in your Bible to the book of Proverbs, just before Isaiah. And let's go to Proverbs. I do believe we can go to Proverbs chapter 16 or chapter 14 verse 12. Chapter 14 verse 12 of Proverbs says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
There is a way which seems right unto a man from his wisdom's standpoint of what man tells him. But in the end, it's the way of death. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to hear that. That's not what you had in mind. And then let's go to the back to the book of Isaiah, right after Proverbs. Excuse me, right after the book of Ecclesiastes, I do believe. Anyway, Isaiah. Go towards the back of the book of Isaiah to chapter 64. Chapter 64 of Isaiah, verse 6, says this. But we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness, or our good works, being we're so good, are as filthy rags, and we do all fade as a leaf in our iniquities, like the wind have taken it away. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to hear that. Why, you've just been told by mankind you're so good. From God's perspective, your goodness is as filthy rags. You don't want to hear that. Well, that might take you and turn you and run right the hell away from God's word, wouldn't it? But let's not stop there. Let's take a few other places in Scripture and look at things from God's perspective now. Remember, not man's anymore, but from God's. Let's go to the book of Romans. Right after the book of Acts in the New Testament. Just open your Bibles. Two. Let's start in chapter one. And let's start in verse 25. This is what God's perspective of man is. Verse 25 of Romans chapter 1 says, Who changed the truth of God. Now remember that word truth. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. And verse 26. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27, And likewise all the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. And look what he says we are. 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancies, whispers, verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without, verse 31, not understanding Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Well, you don't want to hear that. My goodness, you were just told from man that you were good. That all these things you've done were good, and look what God is telling you. You don't want to hear that. But let's not stop there. Let's go to chapter 3 of Romans. And starting in verse 9, Paul writes, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For have both been proven that Jews and Gentiles are all under sin. That's you and me, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 10, as it is written, there's none righteous. No, not one. Verse 11, there's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Verse 12, they have all gone out of their way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Why? You don't want to hear that. 
you were just told you were good by man in this world. You don't want to hear what God has to say about who you are. That could scare the hell out of you, couldn't it? Then he goes on to say in verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember when man said to you, you are so good, the things that you've done, and you're so smart, you're so intelligent, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Isn't that what man says? Man says there's no such thing as a failure. Just people are ignorant, unlearned. With the right education, good preparation, they can accomplish anything. And let's go to chapter uh, 3 of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians, verse 18. From God's perspective, he says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And verse 20, And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Well, you don't want to hear that. You want to hear that you're a smart person. You're capable of learning everything and anything put in front of you. You don't want to hear that your wisdom is vanity in the eyes of God. Why, man tells me I'm smart. I want to listen to man. Regardless of who's behind man, or you say it's Satan, I don't have to believe that. But I want to believe man in this world because I don't want to hear this. This makes me feel uncomfortable. That's not who I am. And then he says something in chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians, verse 2. He says, If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that you're stupid. It's not what God is saying. Because mankind will tell you you're smart. You're intelligent. You're a genius. You can do anything you put your mind to doing. That may be true to a point. But in the end... It'll bring you death. That's what God said. Now what I have shown you in scripture here, ladies and gentlemen, with many references of who exactly you are. And you were born under sin. And you go, what? Yes, you were born under sin. Because in one of the Psalms, and I do believe it is Psalm 52, but again, I may be wrong, where God says, you were born in sin when your mother conceived you. You were in sin because your mother was in sin. I just can't find it right now to show you from Scripture, but if I find it before we finish this, I will show it to you. But it says, in sin your mother conceived you, is what it says. Now, with that in mind, you didn't want to hear none of this from God's perspective. Be honest. It cut right to the heart, didn't it? You see, ladies and gentlemen, people want to hear good things. People want to hear God is all love. 
God is all tolerance. God is the God of love and he will accept anything that I think is right and good enough for me. I don't want to hear what you think God says in this word that you just wrote or read to me. Who are you to sit there and judge me? I hear that a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I don't judge anybody. Never have, never will. The word of God is a judge here. People like to lash out at the people presenting the truth of God's word. Absolutely they do. Because they don't understand it. And something they don't understand, they right away become defensive. And it's the same way with the word of God. And it's the same way with Jesus Christ. Now that he's in the equation. People don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the only one that can truly save them. It's the goodness of Jesus Christ is what God will recognize. They don't want to see that. They don't want to believe that I have to stoop to some so-called created person that claimed to be God in the flesh and dwelt among us and then was nailed to a cross and died for me. I've had people tell me they think that Jesus Christ is nothing more than a zombie walking around after being raised from the dead. How sad. But man has the right to believe what it is they believe. Why does Jesus Christ scare the hell out of people just as the word of God does? It's because mankind does not want to accept Jesus Christ. Mankind wants to do stuff so that he will be told He's doing good things. He's doing good works. When it comes to his eternal life, which he believes or not, he wants to participate. He doesn't want to take the word of some person that was supposedly here on this earth some 2,000 years ago, even though it was an eyewitness account. And it's written in God's word, which we explained and shown you that it is the truth. It is the only truth that's in this world. Jesus Christ died on the cross. And people lash out. And they will deny, denounce Jesus Christ completely. And they'll threaten you and they'll say, look, you're nothing but a heretic. You're nothing but a Bible-thumping false teacher. And they will become very rude, call you all kinds of names. Now, does that bother me? No. And the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, because of the love of God that I have from Jesus Christ now that you do not experience. Because I know from God's word and from coming to the Savior, my great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you, he died for on that cross, just like he did mean he loves you just as much as he loves me. Bar none. I can handle anything you throw at me because you're not throwing it at me, ladies and gentlemen. You're throwing it at God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth proclaiming to be the Savior of mankind. Jesus Christ went to the cross, the finished work of the cross that he prov provided, found in Romans through Philemon, the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that Paul teaches, gives you the gospel that can save you, the gospel that can change everything for you. You can never have to worry about being scared to the hell out of you because you listen to God's word and to believe on Jesus Christ. This is what he did for you. This gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Open your Bibles at first to chapter 15, verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, and which also you have received, and wherein you stand, verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I have preached unto you, unless you've believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ had died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Verse 4, And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, the truth of God's word is Jesus Christ. That's who this whole thing is about. And yet people will run when they hear Jesus Christ's name. Or well, they can listen to God 
to hear about God, but the minute you say Jesus Christ, who is the truth of God's word, they run and hide because it scares the hell out of them, ladies and gentlemen, and it should. It shouldn't be enough to say, hey, I need something that I can't get on my own accord, no matter what man and Satan tells me how good I am. Maybe you should start listening to God. All that God said about you is true. But Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you enough. He died for you on that cross. Believe on him. Believe on the gospel that was given to you. The savior of the world is Jesus Christ. He's fully God. He's fully the Holy Spirit. He's fully Jesus Christ. There's only one God, and that's Jesus Christ. His word is truth. Come to Jesus Christ. Believe on the cross of Jesus Christ. Believe on the finished work. What was presented to you tonight from the revelation of the mystery, the doctrine for the body of Christ found in Romans to Philemon. And the word of God, which is truth, and Jesus Christ will never, ever scare the hell out of you again. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Holler. We're the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth. 301 Becker Street, Apartment 31, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth, 301 Becker Street, Apartment 31, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. Again, this is Robert Holler. Until next time.